you're talking about before basic and you had, you had mentioned it uh, about the walking as well in terms of like, Hey, walk for four minutes, run for, for one minute. And then yeah. eventually after four months, you know, you have to a certain point, but um, like is that that's based, what timeline is that based off of? Because we get a lot of folks that are going now, granted, you can't go to the recruiter now, at least for special warfare and go, Hey, I want to leave next week. That doesn't work like that for special warfare anyway. So you're, you're looking at a minimum of three to six months. Um, so based off a of timeline, because, you know, a lot of people have, have read or listened to the book can't hurt me uh, by David Goggins. And, and he just, yeah, he, had, he had, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And, and the audio book is better than the, the actual book. So for those of you out there, but um, you know, he went to the recruiter and they said, Hey, you, you got to lose some weight and you got three yeah. months. And he just went out and freaking crushed it and lost a whole bunch of weight. So like, what timeline with that walking versus running is that built on? Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking perfect world, right? Obviously, if you, you know, if you're like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, I've got it. I'm about a year out, you know, because think if it took you four months to pay the price of making your bones nice and strong, and then you had eight months to build your run, you should be totally fine, especially because remember, you're at the same time should be developing all the energy systems and all that that you need on the other side through biking, rowing, swimming. Think about like the training stimulus you're getting just from training. You should be good. You you do not need much intensity work to be successful when it comes to passing that three mile run or the mile and a half. Because here, here's where people get in trouble. So ready? It's a mile and a half run, correct, still, um, right? So if, when you run a mile and a half, your heart is beating through the roof and it's hard and you're breathing hard, your legs are on fire. So when people run and they don't get a time they want, or they want to run faster, they run a mile and a half as fast as they can say they get 11 minutes or 10 minutes. They want to get faster. Well, their first thought is, well, when I was going as hard as I could go, which we could call high intensity, I failed or didn't run the pace I wanted to, or I want to run faster. So I need to do more of what I failed at to get faster. Now let's, let's, this is the flaw of running endurance training. And this is where, uh, from star Wars, it's a trap, ready? (laughs) You're running at a hard pace. So say you're doing a group run or say you're doing a train ride and, or you're this, and you just start, you're, you're start slowing down. We hit that slow mo and you're like, Oh man. So you're like, I need more intervals. I need more high intensity. Why did you fail? Because you couldn't recycle energy. If you could recycle energy, ATP, which we started to talk about last time, Mm -hmm. you'd be fine. Past like the 10 second mark, almost all your fuel is going to be from the aerobic system or oxidative. And so to tell you, if you failed at high intensity in a mile and a half run, it wasn't because you're not doing enough anaerobic work. It's because your aerobic system still is weak and they're doing too much high intensity. So even if I don't have much time, I don't need to do many intervals because I think people forget that a mile and a half run, even though that's one of your shortest runs in terms of te- like that's the shortest test run you're ever going to do. Yep. I know in the OFT, there's some short events. Those are all aerobically driven efforts. So the fastest marathoner in the world right now, who most people would consider not an anaerobic athlete, uh, Elliot Kipchoge, he's the two hour marathon guy, ready? So have you ever, what's the fastest pace you've ever run on a treadmill? Have you ever kicked it up to like 13, 14, 15 miles per hour? Yeah. And it's, it's for short sprints. Yeah. Yeah. So he's holding 13 miles per hour for two hours. That's insane. So think about this. He does 90% of his training at low intensity. Now his low intensity is blazing fast. This is the world's fastest marathoner who most people consider slow aerobic and would be absolutely get crushed in a event like a 400. He's holding like 65 second 400s for like 420 times in a row or 240 times in a row. Apologies. So what I'm saying is, having a strong aerobic base and being able to produce like that energy from the oxidative or fat is not going to make you slower. It's going to make sure you can get the energy to go faster. 
right? So that's what, so people get that all confused. So they're like, oh man, I, I've got to, I've got to run the mile and a half faster. I've got to do intervals on the track. You like, and they just run intervals or run hard. And then they never develop their actual engine or capacity at all. Because guess what? If you look at their numbers, so what's going to happen when they're rucking? Do you think they're going to be able to really keep that at a low heart rate? No. No. I can tell you from experience. (laughs) Yeah. Like no chance. That's not your opportunity to try to control heart rate. You just got to shuffle, get it done, hit the timelines. Shuffle, get it done. Right. Hit. Make the timeline, no matter what, shuffle. So rucking's not our opportunity to develop that low, to work on low intensity. In the pool, most people, like it's, most people when they're finning and stuff like that, you know, they're they're pushing those big fins. That's a big strength effort and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? So when it's time to run, you do not need much intensity to be absolute crazy fast. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've been doing, I've been doing it all wrong, <laughs> which, that's, which most people have. So <laughs> like, that's the crazy thing is like pro endurance athletes spend most of their time, like at like 80%, even actually the top athletes, 90% of their work is below what we call ventilator, uh, ventilary threshold, which is basically, if you know, the five zone systems would be zone two or lower. Okay. They're spending 90% of their volume there. And if the endurance athletes, the pro endurance athletes are the fastest and best at what they do, why would we not follow their example? No, I, I agree. You follow, you like, do. Yeah, if, that, so, if that's working for somebody, that's what you should be doing. Right. If we're slower than them, clearly what they're doing is kind of something we, you got to follow success. It's like if rock climbers say, Hey, this makes your grip stronger. I would probably do it for grip training. So if endurance athletes are showing in like, if you look at like the Norwegians in the winter Olympics, when they had their best success, um, they actually were doing the most low intensity training. So here, here's an interesting thing. So like in 1999, this guy by lot, uh, basically did a study to see what happens when you change high intensity versus low intensity. So they kind of did a study where they had a, people do hundred percent easy, like all easy training, no hard. Then they kind of did like 80% uh, easy 20% hard, 50% easy, 50% hard. And hard was kind of around like 91% of max. Okay. So what they found was that the average fitness, okay, of the the 80-20 group had a 1.5% improvement. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but that's pretty good considering, right? You know, your typical like 12-week study. The 50-50 group actually dropped performance 2.5%. Mm. And this is with, and they've done this many times. Like they've looked at this from the Olympic athlete level. uh, And what they find is at a certain point when intensity starts dripping in too much, you're going to start to pay the price because you're, it's going to increase your recovery time. It's going to affect your strength training. Um, It's pretty crazy. Actually, when the Norwegians had their best success, um, I think that they said they were doing 92% of their training at lower intensity. And then they changed that up to, and then they had their worst Olympics ever. 